So then, uh, welcome to lecture 12. So today we will continue on talking about uh, neural networks. And um, as I mentioned last time uh, at the beginning, for the beginning there are these uh, two nice sources uh, for having an overview. So in particular, these videos by uh, three blue, one brown. Um, so maybe some of you, I hope, had a look at this because in this video lecture, uh, he also explains roughly what we will do today, namely this uh, back pro propagation um, to calculate the gradient for the cost function of a neural network. So, um, so what was a neural network? A neural network was something like this here. Um, so we had a, a lot of vocabulary and our recall. So there will be the notion of an activation function, which in usually just means a function from R to R. And um, a neural network um, has a shape like this, where we have different uh, neurons. And, um, and each neuron has a, has a weight vector um, and, and, and so-called bias and an activation function. Um, but then we, um, instead of saying that uh, we collect these for a neuron, we collected these uh, for a layer uh, at once. And therefore each neuron here had a vector and combining them for each layer gave us then a matrix. So, so the uh, more general picture is this here. So if we have a neural network with some layers, um, then for each layer, so let's assume we have R layers, um, where the, the input layer, the input data, like for example, we had this, uh, if we have a picture of a cat or a dog, we can put them into a, a vector and this vector will be um, the output of the input layer. Um, but this input layer will not have um, these, um, these weight matrices and bias and activation function. Um, so therefore now we, we just consider the layers after the, the input layer. And so for each layer, we will have a weight matrix and we will do it more explicitly in a second. Um, we have some weight matrix with, which basically tells us um, if we are here, so this is a, the first layer. So here we have layer zero. Um, so this is here the case I zero and here is I one. And the weight matrix basically just says how these um, 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 values here from the input layer, um, how we weight them um, to calculate the value of the neurons um, in this layer here. And then for each neuron, we also have a bias, which for each neuron just means a number. And here in this case, in this picture, we have um, M numbers, which means that in this case here, we have M neurons. So here with, in this picture, M is the number of neurons. And um, this N here is the number of uh, or also, let's say number of neurons of the previous layer. And we have for each layer uh, an activation function. Um, and then we, we introduce uh, the so-called linear part um, of this neuron, which is calculated by um, taking the, the values of the layer before. So for example, here, if we start in the input layer, in this picture here, we have um, n values, x1 up to xn. This is a vector. So this here is a vector x1 up to xn. Um, so here in this notation, this is uh, um, the case when we look at the first layer. And then what we do with this vector, we multiply it with this matrix here, which we can do because this is an m by n matrix. And then this here will be a vector of size m. And to this vector, we add at each component um, this bias, which in this case is also a vector of size m. And therefore this in the end will be a, a vector of size m. And this will be the linear part and the linear part is usually denoted by that. 
and also for notation these square brackets um, we use to denote the in which layer we are and um, if we are the first layer here then this this number here is the input layer but in general this x will be the output um, of the layer before so in this case here this this x is also uh, a0 and if this is here the input layer and then if we calculate after calculating the linear part, which is a vector of size m, where m is the number of neurons, then the output of this layer is applying this um, activation function at each entry. Um, and here we will also use uh, this notation here. Um, so even though this sigma is just a function from r to r, um, if we apply it to a vector of size m by this, so this expression we define to to just apply it at each entry, okay? And, um, and then there were some examples for activation functions, even though today we will not um, choose an explicit activation function, um, but there are these uh, two famous ones. So uh, for example, this uh, so-called rectified linear unit is a function from R to R, um, which if you plot it, R to R um, just takes a maximum um, between the zero and the input, which just means if the value I plug in is negative, I set it to zero. And if it's positive, I just uh, leave it the same. So here, if you plot it, it's a graph, then this here is the graph of the rectified linear unit. And then we had this uh, sigmoid function, which we used when we talked about logistic regression and um, this graph of this was just given by, by this function here. So this is a sigmoid function S. And there are several different um, um, activation functions. And for example, here I gave you this Wikipedia page. And you also see that um, um, they do not just give the, the functions, but they also give the derivatives. And this we will see today why this is interesting. Uh, because the derivatives of the activation function they play will appear when we calculate um, the gradient of our cost function. Um, and therefore you will need to use um, these formulas. Okay. And so now, um, so at the end of last time, we then um, gave this explicit uh, neural network. Um, and I just want to make sure that every notation is clear. So in this case here, we have um, um, three layers or four layers. If we also say the input layer is a layer. So we have four layers here where these two in the middle are called the hidden layers. And here we have the output layer and the input layer. And for example, in the input layer here we have, um, so we have four, uh, five input things. Um, so um, we could say we have here five neurons so this A0 in this case would be in R5. And then the, the first layer has three neurons and therefore the, the data for the first layer will be, we have an, a weight matrix here, which needs to be of size three times five. And here this three is the number of neurons in this layer. And the five is the number of neurons in the previous layer. And because each entry in this matrix here, so there are 15 numbers and each entry in this matrix corresponds to one of these arrows here. So um, each number in here somehow, so for example, here we have one, so for example, here the neuron uh, four, and um, this will have some influence on the value for the second neuron here. So here's some, some, some number attached to this error. And, um, uh, and this will be the entry of this matrix here. Um, so maybe let's give this a name. Let's, so if I have the matrix here, this is now the, um, because this is a three by five matrix, the rows corresponds um, to the neurons here. So this is the entry in this matrix um, in the second um, row and in the um, fourth column. Yeah, so the number in this matrix at this position somehow 
corresponds to this thing here and says how much uh, does this neuron somehow cares about the output of this uh, neuron here. And then um, what we do to calculate the value of this, so this I will do on the next slide, we um, multiply these numbers in the matrix with the values um, coming from these neurons here. And then we have a number and to this number at each position we add um, the bias. So here in this case, um, to calculate this number, we would take all these values here, multiply them with uh, the entries of this um, second row of this matrix, and then in the end add the, the second entry of this um, bias vector here. This will give a number. This is a, the, the second part of the, the second entry of the linear part in this layer. And then to this we apply um, the activation function, which then will give um, the, the second entry of this um, output of this layer, which then gets fed into this uh, layer here. Yeah, so, and these things here um, are all uh, the parameters, um, well, we, maybe not, the, so the activation function, they, they are fixed from the beginning, so they belong to the, um, the architecture of our neural network, but these numbers here are um, then our parameters uh, in the end. And this is what we want to find um, when we train uh, this neural network. Okay, so here, um, even in more detail, what I just said. Um, so, so here we just focus on the on the on the layer one. So what we do first, we will have some input numbers here. So, for example, these numbers could correspond to the values of some pixels in an image, and then um, after we get these numbers from the input um, layer, we and calculate these three numbers here. Um, so here, these are the, uh, so this Z1 is a vector of size three, and these are just the three entries of this vector, um, which comes from multiplying this vector with this matrix, and then adding this uh, bias vector. And then at each entry, we apply the activation function, and this then gives the value of the vector uh, a, which also has three entries. And this is then the new um, output, uh, it's a new input uh, for layer two. And then in the end, in this picture here, at least we get uh, one number because the outlook, output layer uh, just has one uh, neuron. Yeah, so is this clear? So what we call what the Z is, the A, the W and the B and the Sigma. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> and in this example, we can now count. So how many numbers do we want to find? Well, in the first layer, we have um, uh, 15 numbers in the matrix and three numbers here. So here we have 18 things we want to find. Here we have six numbers in the matrix. Um, so this corresponds to these uh, six things here. And we have two biases. So um, we have eight numbers. And in the last thing here, we have one, two, and the bias. Um, so here we have three numbers. So in total, to train this neural network, uh, we, are, we want to find uh, 29 um, numbers. And uh, so how, would, how do we train this? Um, well, as I mentioned before, this will be similar to what we did uh, when we talked about linear regression. And there we used um, this uh, gradient um, descent algorithm. So, but um, first um, uh, let's recall the, the notion of the cost function. So our neural network, um, uh, what we want to approximate is a function um, a vector valued function from Rn to Rm. So in our example, this will be a function from um, R5 to R1. 
because these numbers here just mean, uh, so n is the number of um, input neurons and m is the number of output neurons. And in general, a neural network will be a function like this. So um, with the old notation, um, in this case, this Rn is our uh, feature space and this Rm is our um, output space or label space. And then a training example is just a tuple of these two numbers. Um, so for example, if this training, if this neural network is um, a, a dog cat classifier, um, or maybe just in this case, a cat cl classifier, let's say a yes or no, because maybe in this case here, we just have a number R and, um, and then a training example is a, is a picture of a cat given as a vector in R5. Well, maybe five pixel is not a, enough to uh, really draw a picture, but uh, let's assume uh, the input is R5 and the output will then be a number. And then here training set will be a collection of training example where maybe some of these axes corresponds to picture through the cat and then the output will be one. And then maybe there are some pictures uh, without a cat and then um, the output will be zero. And for a fixed uh, training set, um, we then want to define a cost function. So in general, a cost function will then be a map um, from the space of parameters um, to the, the real values. And what we want to, to find is um, for which parameters this cost function is minimal. Yeah, so in our example, um, what we have is a function j, which for a fixed training set, so to be precise, one should say that j depends on t, but for a fixed t, and it will be a function from r29 to r, because we, want, uh, because we have 29 parameters which we want to find, and the cost function will be a function from these parameters into the real numbers. And this number, if it's um, uh, big, then uh, we have a lot of cost, uh, meaning that um, our, our current choice of parameters uh, is um, not a good choice. And what we want to do is we want to minimize the cost uh, because usually these cost functions somehow um, measure the difference between the calculated uh, output for a given input example, and then they compare it to the um, real um, output ex, uh, in this training set. Yeah. And for this, we had a few examples before. Um, so for example, in the case of this linear regression, um, we, um, we had this hypothesis. So this here now corresponds um, well, we had this hypothesis, which depended on some, some, um, some theta, which are the parameters. And um, this corresponds now to our function uh, f. And uh, what we did is um, we, well, I changed notation now here. So t is now the number of training example. And for we take the sum over all training example and then we plucked um, the, the feature of this training example into this function, depending on these uh, um, parameters. And then we took the difference to the um, um, output in the training example, it took the square and summed this up. And then, so this is the, the sum of squares. And another example we had when we talked about this logistic regression, and there we defined what we called a log likelihood. And the log likelihood um, was, this part here without the minus sign. So this we call small L. Um, so without the minus sign, what we wanted to maximize is this log uh, likelihood because this measured um, how likely um, our, how likely is the, the, the training example given this um, um, parameter theta. Um, but instead of maximizing, um, this L, we can also max, uh, minimize the negative. So therefore this here can also be seen as an example, as a cost function we want um, to minimize. 
Ja? And um, so these examples can also be uh, used for our uh, neural network. Um, but what I want to explain today will be independent of the choice um, of the cost function. And um, so if we have a cost function, so in, I mean, in our example, we want, for example, to try to find a function like this. And the main idea to, um, to minimize our cost function um, is to use this, this algorithm of gradient and descent. And for this, we, we start by some, well, we start with some parameters, which maybe are terrible choices. So for example, we could say all of them are zero or we assign to them some random values. And then um, we want to change them a little bit to make our cost function smaller. And um, the idea was that if we calculate the, the gradient of a cost function, then the gradient shows in the direction um, of the steepest ascent. So it shows in the direction where the cost function would go would increase if we walk in this direction in the parameter space. And therefore, what we want to do is we want to go in the opposite direction. Um, so the update rule will always be that um, for the, we, um, we calculate the gradient. So we see in which direction do we get uh, and the highest increase of our cost function. But then we take a negative of this. So we look in the other direction um, so in our example, this thing here, so everything here, this theta will be an element in R29. So this is in a 20 dimensional uh, space, which we cannot imagine, but, um, but this, this gradient here will also be in um, R29. And, um, um, and this will show in the direction of uh, the highest increase of the cost function. And, and then we will subtract this from the current um, theta. And there's, we can then uh, include a factor alpha, which um, says how fast we change uh, uh, or how big the step is uh, we are going to take. And then there was this, this picture here. So for example, in this picture, we just have two parameters. And for the, here in the, um, in the beginning, we maybe have, so this here is a graph of some cost function. And um, here we have some starting values for theta zero and theta one. And at this case, when we calculate the gradient at this point, then the gradient will be a vector in two dimension, which in this case, if I would draw it, would maybe show where well, this here is now. Uh, at this point, it, it draws a gradient because it shows somehow in in this direction here. Uh, and, but in this case, then one goes in the opposite direction because here, if you do it at every step at some point, you maybe uh, end up in the, in the uh, minimum here. But in this case, you also see that you have um, some uh, several uh, local minima. And if, if you are unlucky, then maybe you end up in the and this thing here, um, but even though maybe here is a better place uh, to land in. Okay, so this is the main idea. So now we need to ask ourselves, um, how can we um, write down the cost function as a gradient of a cost function for our uh, neural network? And what is the best strategy to um, calculate this? So do we want to write down a function which depends on 29 uh, variables? And then do we have some messy formula? Or what is the best way to calculate this? Um, maybe layer and by layer. So yeah, so in our example, as I said, we have uh, 29 uh, parameters. And therefore, we have a cost function from the R29 to R, which we want to minimize. And therefore, what we want to calculate is the gradient. And the gradient was to take, was a vector. So in this case here, this D is 29. So this is a, uh, maybe here then, so one, oops. 
So let's say one, two, and so on. So this is a vector of size 29. And at each position, um, I just take the partial derivative with respect um, to each of these um, parameters. Yeah. And the, the main idea to calculate this thing is the so-called back propagation. Um, and this basically means that we will do it uh, layer by layer. So the value of the cost function um, will depend on the, on the output. And the output uh, depends on the last layer. And therefore, we can first ask um, for the, the partial derivatives with respect to the parameters with, which correspond to the last uh, layers. This we can then calculate. And in this calculation, there is a part uh, which we can store. And then if we ask um, for the derivative with respect to the previous layer, we can use this number and don't need to do some calculation um, twice. So, Mm. So the, the basic idea here will be, uh, do, it, do it here. Um, so yeah, maybe let's draw it bigger and maybe let's copy the, the neural network we had. So here we had this example here. So these um, 29 uh, numbers, which we want to find, um, some of them belong to the, to the last layer. So the, the last three numbers here somehow correspond um, um, to the... Uh, to layer um, four or layer three. And then we have some numbers here, which are in the second layer. And then some numbers here, which corresponds to the weight in the first layer. And the idea will be that we first calculate um, uh, the partial derivatives of the cost function for, for this layer. And in this calculation, we will calculate something which we can use to calculate easily um, the partial derivative of our cost function with respect uh, to the green weights. And in this calculation, we will also calculate some number which we can save and then use in the calculation of the partial derivatives with respect to the weights uh, from the first layer. And with this, we can then calculate the, uh, the gradient. And then we just use the gradient descent, namely just remove this vector we have here from our weights. And this will lead us in, in a better direction because this will um, minimize our uh, cost function. And for this, um, you, we will need to use the chain rule. Um, but first, um, so what we will always um, assume is that we have some, some training set. So we have some, some training data um, which will be used um, to calculate uh, the cost function. And um, what we can do, so maybe also copy here our neural network. So for each um, of these um, features in the trainings, um, for each trainings example, I can feed this into this uh, neural network with the current with the current parameters we have. And this will always give um, me some, some output um, A3. So for each, um, um, we can compute. Yeah, and this is uh, called a forward pass because what we do is we just pass it um, through the neural network and get a number. 
And then uh, what the, the usual cost function will do, it will compare this number here, um, compare this with the corresponding m y j, where this j here goes through all uh, trainings examples. Yeah. Um, but as I said, I will not care about the explicit j here. Um, but for example, in this case, we could also take the, the sum over all trainings example and then take the, um, the difference of this y and this a and take it to the square, for example. And this would be one example for the, um, for the cost function. Or we could also use this um, logistic cost function uh, we used when we did this logistic regression. And yeah, so, and my plan today was um, to not do it um, in generality like this, uh, because I think to get the main idea, um, I just want to do it in one dimension. So usually the derivatives which are involved in this picture here are in, in, in higher dimensions. Um, but I think the main idea of this algorithm can be understood purely by just having a high school background, meaning just um, um, taking the derivatives of function from R to R. So for this, we need to assume that we really have a simple neural network. Um, but then next time um, we will talk about these higher dimensional derivatives um, where you talk about the Jaco Jacobian. So if I have a linear function, and there, instead of having the derivative being a number, the derivative uh, will be a matrix. Um, but I want to avoid the confusion um, that you will need to think about transpose and what size do these matrices have. And I want just to show the, um, the main idea of this algorithm. And what we will use is the, is the chain rule and, but maybe, well, I hope I don't need to recall this, but I, let me recall this a little bit. I mean, if I have a, the, if I have a composition of functions, let's say I have um, h of x, which is um, f of g of x, then of course, if I take the derivative of h with respect um, to, to x, then this is the same, or maybe let's first use school notation. So in school, h prime, we say is f prime of g of x times the derivative g prime um, of x. And um, with this notation here, so this just means that I take the derivative of f with respect uh, to g, um, so this just means that I, I don't view this as a function here, I just view it as a, as a variable to which I take the derivative. Um, and here I then have g d dx. Uh, yeah. And uh, Yeah, so this here, um, I mean, what, what I could also write here is this is uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and if, if there would be another function inside here, then I could just uh, um, add more terms here. Um, but yeah, so, so now uh, let's do a really stupid simple example. Um, um, oh, anyway, let's do it now by hand. Um, so what I want to do is I want to have a really simple neural network 
which just uh, looks like this. And this makes everything one dimensional. So instead of talking about matrices, we will talk about just uh, numbers. So here I have input layer, then I have one hidden layer and an output layer. So this here will be A0, this will be A1, and this here will be A2. Yeah. And um, so here I have this. And what is A1? Where A1 is sigma 1 applied to uh, Z1. And what is Z1? Z1 is the linear part. So this will be W1 times A0 plus B1. And similar here, um, A2, the output will be sigma 2. This will be some activation function times um, Z2. So this is the linear part. And Z2 will be W2, which in this example here is just the number times A, oops, A1 plus B2. And now we will take a training set and let's do also a really simple example. Let's say we just have um, X and Y. So I just have a training set with one training example. And um, so what we can do um, for this X, um, Um, we can calculate the corresponding uh, A2. Um, um, by plugging this into the uh, neural network here and then calculate this with the current W1, B1, W2 and uh, B2. Yeah. So how many parameters do we have here? In this case, we have one, two, three, four. Uh, uh, parameters. And so now we can define the cost function. Maybe let's do cost function. So the cost function, um, which let's call it also theta. So theta will be now our parameters and our parameters are W1, B1, W2, and B2, so this will be a vector of size four. And for example, we could say, um, um, this is just, um, let's take one half A2 minus Y squared. So here this A2 um, is uh, the A2 coming from, from the X, and we can subtract it from the real y and take the square and take one half. And, um, and now what we want, um, we want to calculate the gradient of this cost function. Um, so here this function j is a function from r4 to r. Right, so for each choice of these numbers, so if you give me these four numbers, then um, we can calculate this A2 by plugging this X here into, into this neural network. And then um, this number here is calculated by using these, um, these four numbers, which you plug into this function. This gives an, an output and this we can subtract, uh, then we can subtract the corresponding trainings feature, um, F trainings label, and takes a square. And if they differ a lot, then this number is big. And what we want to, to minimize is this function, 
function here. And therefore what we want is we want to calculate the gradient of this function, um, um, the Nabla J um, at some, at the parameters here. So what we want to calculate is this J, the derivative with respect um, to W1. Del with respect to B1, del J with respect to W2, and then del J uh, with respect to B2. And then evaluated at this theta. Yeah, so this is what we want to calculate because if we can calculate these values, then we can take this vector here and subtract it um, from this theta, or maybe first multiply it with some, some learning factor alpha and then subtract it um, from this. So with this, if we can calculate this, um, the new theta will be the old theta minus the gradient um, here, or let's say minus minus alpha times this. Yeah. And for this example, it's not important that we take this function here, um, but in general, um, yeah, it will be some, um, some function which we can, where we can take the derivative um, with respect to this guy here. Okay, so, um, how can we calculate these numbers? And what, as I said, what we want to do first, we want to calculate the entries here, which correspond uh, to the last layer. So we want to calculate, for example, uh, del j, um, uh, with the derivative with respect to um, w2. So, First, with respect to W two and B two. So what we want is del J del um, W2 and, and now we need to, to, to go see all these compositions of functions which appear here. Um, so first, um, uh, so how can we connect this, this weight W2 um, to the value of this function j, because j is given by this a2, and a2 is given by sigma of z2, and z2 is given by this thing here. And here we have w2. And this will be the, now the idea um, that we will use a chain rule now in several ways. So instead of Taking this, we can take first the derivative of j with respect to a2. So here you can think now a2 is just a variable and this is a function in a2 and the, the derivative with res respect to this thing is quite easy, um, especially in this case here. And now um, you can view a2 as a function um, which depends on z2, for example. So um, we can now here take the derivative of a2 with respect to z2. And this basically just means that we want to take the derivative of our um, activation function because a2, the dependency of a2 on this z2 is exactly um, our activation function. So, so this here I can maybe already write. So this is just... Mm, the activation function 
uh, sigma 2. And there uh, we take the derivative and just leave in z2. And also, uh, maybe after this, I will write this. And now, z2, um, this is a function which depends on uh, w2. So this um, here at this stage, we can now calculate the derivative of z2 with respect to w2. Yeah, And here, this is exactly uh, the, the chain rule that the derivative um, of j with respect to w2 can be written like this. Um, so you can really think of, so maybe this is some of the, the physicist way of doing this. You can cancel out um, these derivatives and in the end have the same derivative uh, here. Yeah, And each of these parts we can calculate. Um, why? Um, well, in this case here, um, well, for example, in this specific example, if I take the derivative with respect to A2, well, then I just take uh, the, the two here in front, this cancels out. Um, and yeah, so in this case, I just get um, A2, or maybe let's use color here. So this is A2 minus Y. So this corresponds to this part times, and here, um, this is the derivative of A2 with respect to Z. So this is just, so if you, this part, this is just the activation function, the derivative of this, where we plug in um, A2, uh, Z2, sorry. And this value we also have because um, when we calculate this here for a given x, we can calculate this thing here and, and, and therefore we have all these numbers. So we can plug this number here into the derivative of our um, activation function. And here we also see why we want the derivative of the activation function. And then the last step here, um, the derivative of the z2 with respect to w2, where this is just, um, as a number uh, a1. So this here is just <clears throat> a1. Okay, and all these numbers um, we can calculate and therefore we can calculate um, this entry here. And now, um, <clears throat> Similar if we would take dj, the derivative with respect to b2, the idea is exactly the same. We could take this one here, a2, a depends on z, and then here, the z2 depends on b2. In this case, everything gets a little bit easier uh, because in this case, it's exactly the same, um, but here the derivative of z with respect to b is just one. So this here is just one. Okay, and therefore we have these uh, two numbers and this thing here is finished. And now, um, so we get um, these entries which correspond um, to the, the last layer and now let's see what happens if we want to calculate uh, this entry here. Uh, and then we should see um, what we can use from the calculation we did before, because some of these parts will appear again and we can use them. So we want now the derivative of J with respect to W2 well, and now we go a long way, but um, it will be a similar way because from W, uh, so from J, the first um, dependency is 
Um, oh, maybe I should copy this here. So let me put this here. So the first thing is we can calculate this with respect to A2. A2, we can calculate the derivatives with respect to Z2, Z2, and now comes a little bit uh, the difference. Um, I mean, in the end, we want to, um, oh, sorry, I want W1 here. I mean, W2 we did, right? We want the W1 for the uh, first layer. And so we want to end up here. Um, so here, um, instead of taking the derivative um, with respect to A, uh, instead of taking the derivative with respect to, to W, um, we now take the derivative with respect to A1, because then A1 we can go to Z1, and Z1 we can go to W1. So now we take um, the derivative with respect to A1, and now we are in the layer in the layer before, and here we can take A1 to Z1, and then Z1 depends on the W1. Yeah, so we started with J, and we want the dependency of J of this W1. And we go the way to A2, from A2 to Z2, from Z2 to A1, which then brings us to the layer before. And then we go to Z1, Z1, and then we have the dependency on W1. And you see, it's almost the same as before. But um, just the beginning is the same here. So this part here, this number uh, we already calculated, and this number appears exactly here. Yeah, so we can use again this number, which we calculated and saved at some point, and we can use it here. Uh, and now we just need to um, calculate the, the rest, which is here. So the only difference is that at this point, Z2, um, instead of going to get the dependency on this W2, we now go to A1, which then opens the door to the layer before. Um, but this here, we don't need to calculate again. Um, we can uh, use this calculation as um, because this number here we, we calculated. And then we just need to calculate these numbers. Uh, but this is also, so, so here we then have uh, this stuff here, which we calculated before, and then um, that two dependency on A1 is then W2, so this is this here. And then A1 dependency on Z1, this will be um, Vigma 1, the derivative where we plug in Z1. And then in the end, um, this here, Z1, the dependency on W1, which is A0. Okay, is this clear? So in, in higher dimensions, the, the difference here would be that um, instead of just multiplying with numbers, it will be a multiplication of uh, matrices. And at some point we need to take care of if we take the matrix or the transpose of the matrix. Uh, but for the first step, I wanted to avoid um, this uh, confusion and just wanted to make sure that the idea is clear that um, we want to get this vector here. And this vector um, with a neural network here um, 
this depends on all these weights attached to these things here. Um, and we first start by um, considering the dependency on, on these weights, and then we do some calculation. And some parts of this calculation we can save. And then if we ask for the dependency on these weights, we can use um, these and just need to calculate a little bit more. And then we can use this again uh, to calculate this here. And this is then, this is the main idea of this uh, back propagation. Yeah, and with this, um, we can then calculate the, the gradient and then we can use gradient uh, descent and subtract this gradient from our current choice of parameters, which will lead us then in the right direction. And here in the last slide, so here I was lazy and I stole this from the uh, from the Stanford course. So the, the general algorithm um, is as follows. So maybe let me copy the calculation I did here. Uh, so we had this pink part, which we can use again. And this pink part appeared in this calculation here. Oops. So, so in general, this algorithm, if we have R layers, um, then first what we can do is um, we can plug in the, uh, the trainings feature and for this trainings feature, which in the example before was just one value, um, we can calculate all these values of A and Z. So we can assume these values exist and for the current choice of parameters. And, and then um, what we do is, which is now uh, we want to calculate this uh, gradient. And because we go in the other direction, this is now called the backward pass. And so for each layer where we go from R to one, so we start at the last layer, if R, if we are now start in the last layer, we first calculate um, the derivative of our cost function with respect, with respect to Z2, and this we call uh, in this in with respect to ZR, the last layer, and this we call delta R. And this is exactly what the pink part here is. This with this notation would be uh, delta two, because this here is exactly the derivative of J with respect to Z two. Yeah, And this is the part we can use also for the next step. And um, then after this, what we compute then the derivative of J with respect to WK. So this here is then given by Delta, um, which is this here times um, the uh, A. And this is uh, what we calculated before. Um, this here was uh, A one. Yeah, and here you see the transpose because in our example, this A1 was just a number, um, but in general, it will be a vector and you need to be a little bit careful. Um, you will, we will see that we will need to take the transpose. But the idea here is exactly um, this formula uh, here. And um, if we take it, if we want to calculate the derivative with respect to B, and um, then this last factor here was just one. So we just take this delta. And then if we go to the next layer, then uh, we are not here. We are not in the last layer. We are here. And um, what we now do is um, we, uh, we take, um, uh, so the, the new delta, well, maybe this I didn't write down, but if we um, would have done the next step, then the, the next delta would have been 
um, this part here, this would have been the, the delta one, uh, because this we would use um, um, for the next um, W, uh, because in here, the only difference is always the last step, um, instead of going, um, asking for the dependency of Z to W, we want to go to the next, to the previous layer, and therefore um, we will choose the way of DZ um, D um, A. So what, what we want to save is this part because this will also appear. So, and the definition of this here is, um, is uh, exactly uh, this part here, um, which is the, the previous delta. And um, here this W is, uh, Yeah, yeah, this W is exactly um, this part here, uh, because if I take the derivative of Z with respect to A, then here in this example, this is W1, uh, right? So we see this multiplication also appears here. And this strange notation here just means component-wise uh, multiplication uh, so in this in this example, what they use is for the activation function, the rectified uh, linear unit. And here, so this is the derivative of the activation function, which in our case is this here. So this A, the derivative with respect to Z is exactly uh, the A, um, the dependency is the activation function. And this is exactly this part here. Um, so um, you can see that this general algorithm um, is exactly what, what we did in this uh, single case, um, except that in general, numbers will get replaced by matrices. Um, but the, the main idea is really just um, that you use a chain rule. If you want to get this entry of the gradient, then you ask how is the dependency of this cost function uh, um, on this parameter and how can I go to this parameter? And it's always, I go from J to A, from A to Z, from Z to A, uh, and then I can land at this W at some point. Yeah? Okay. And yeah, so this I want to implement next time for our, for the example I did in, in the uh, Python notebook last time, which was exactly uh, this example here. Um, so on the homepage or on the last lecture, uh, we implemented this here in a really naive way in Python. And the next time um, I want to do the implementation of this back propagation for this and maybe train this neural network um, on maybe some silly trainings examples. And then um, do some examples maybe with a TensorFlow to show you some more exciting examples where we really have some real images and some real neural network. But then we will not implement everything by ourselves. Then we will just say, I want a neural network with let's say four layers. And then we can um, choose uh, which activation functions we want to use. And then we can just say, here's the training um, set and train uh, this neural network with this uh, training set. Okay, then, um, yeah, I would stop now and then you can ask uh, some questions. <laughs>